are about 35,000 Marines took the beach on November 20th, 1943. Uh, on the way to the beach, uh, before they even took off from the ship, uh, the, the powers that be had discovered that the tides hadn't come in like they normally do about that time. So a Higgins boat, as they used at that time, needs five feet of water in order to make a beach landing. That's what was expected that day on November 20th, 1943. Instead, the tide never came in, only about three feet of water was, was there above the coral. So what happened, the Higgins boats got caught up on the coral and they couldn't make landfall. They could, the only thing they could get was what, what they called alligators. In fact, by noon, they made the beach landing at 09, by noon only one tank had made it onto the shore. The Marines had to disembark the Higgins boats about 500 yards and wade uh, about chest deep in water to get to the beach. Unfortunately, it was the first time that the Marines had seen in the Pacific the Japanese put out a full defense on the beachhead. Uh, typically before that, like at Guadalcanal, the Japanese had a tactic of letting the Marines get ashore uh, and then opening up hell on them. In this case, uh, unfortunately for the Marines that were stuck on the coral reef, the Japanese had a, a built-in defense right there on the beach. Uh, so mass casualties happened just on the first day. Put it in perspective, uh, Guadalcanal, which lasted over 40 days, there was about 7,000, a little over 7,000 casualties. <laughs> Tarawa was three days, November 20th to November 23rd. I had 6,500 casualties in 76 hours. It was a bloodbath. But as Marines always do, we did take the beach in three days. We did take the island in three days. Uh, and eventually went on to win the Pacific and win the war. So it was a hell of a battle. We're still repatriating Marines from Tarawa more often than any other battle in the Pacific. Uh, this individual, Private Jordan, was interred there with his, with his brothers uh, on the beaches of Tarawa for over 70 years, about 75 years, where they finally discovered his remains, identified his remains, and brought him back to us. All right, so we get to lay him rest today with more of his brothers here at Arlington National Cemetery, and expect many more uh, as your time in Marine Barracks, Washington, as we're going to do a lot more repatriations from Tarawa. On the other side of the world, Navy and Coast Guardsmen were preparing to land Marines on a tiny atoll. The Japanese fought back furiously. Landing barges of the USS Arthur Middleton were stopped on reefs and enemy fire took a dreadful toll of American lives. Of the first waves, only one man out of five survived to get to the beachhead, to hold on to the small strip of land seized at such a high cost from the enemy. In a steady stream, the landing barges brought the wounded back to the transports. 